So um, then also um, Derek is actually now calling in from San Francisco. So um, good morning also, Derek. <laughs> um, so great that, that you are with us. Great to be here. Thanks yeah. for having me. And you know, let, let's let's kick off uh, our our event also like with an anecdote because the fun fact and also kudos to Derek is um, that Verena and I actually know each other for many years, like really back from high school. And then like as as usually uh, as it goes, it's like ways depart, and at some point you found your find yourself back uh, back in the future, and and then. I think it was like in 2017 when I moved to Berlin and then started working in the venture capital scene. Verena also was working for a VC. And at some point we're like, okay, why don't we actually do something together? And then it was a good opportunity to get involved. I heard about startup grind and yeah, like the, 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 the rest is kind of history. And the good thing is now that Verena is not only like one of my best friends and my co-director, but now mm -hmm. she's also my co-founder because we started our venture together. And that is uh, kind of also how you circle into nicely into our, our story as well, um, which is quite cool. And, and as, as probably everyone knows, like startup grind as it is today is not like this. It didn't start like an international network. So maybe today we could use this opportunity to, for you to share a bit of the, the background story, how it all started in the garage where you are <laughs> probably at the moment. Um, like, yeah, it's, it's with, with many startups, it's like just a bunch of people who want to build something, who want to have a, who have a dream or a big vision. Um, but I also heard one story that you actually mentioned that Startup Brand somehow started as a, as a, as a homeless shelter for startup people. And even one guy stole kind of a pizza for the first event or something like that. So maybe you can elaborate a bit more on, on the early days. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Grateful to be here. Thanks everyone for attending. Uh, startup Grind, uh, for those that aren't totally familiar, just uh, to reiterate uh, what it is, it's uh, a global community for, for entrepreneurs and people inside of startups. Uh, we have 600 chapters around the world in 120 countries where we bring people together. Uh, those people are all connected through the values that we share, which are about giving more than you take, helping others before you help yourself and making friends. And uh, we host uh, about 300 events a month um, for, for, for people. Uh, we'll have, you know, probably 150,000 people attend our events this year. Um, and, you know, over the course of the last 10 years, we've had, you know, more than half a million people attend those events, maybe close to a million actually. Um, uh, and uh, it, it, it started in my office in uh, Mountain View, California, uh, just close to where I, li I still live today. Um, you're right. I am back in my garage where we kind of, did all the early work uh, for Startup Grind because of COVID. We're now, you know, sort of all working from home, which I, I love working here. So it's not not a big a burden or anything. Um, but yeah, Startup Grind really just started as a, you know, just something very trivial and something that was just, you know, sort of solving a problem that we had. There was no intention for it to ever be a global community there was no there was no thought to that whatsoever um i had worked at electronic arts as a product manager i quit my job in the summer of 2009 to be an entrepreneur and i started building things and sort of really struggling uh to because i didn't know what to do so i was reading everything i was watching videos i was you know i was just trying to learn as much as possible but um you know, me and some other friends who were in a similar position, we just started meeting together once a month to just kind of help each other and learn from each other to like, we thought maybe we might start companies with the people we were meeting with and, you know, just have an excuse to brainstorm and, and to, to learn. And, uh, and it worked and people liked it. And, uh, and so that sort of went on really for about two years, we sort of did that for fun and there was, it was not like a, a, it was not a startup, it was a project. And I, I love the idea of people 
um, you know, there's not a lot of pressure on startup grind to be some big thing. And is if you can keep your startup a project as long as possible, I highly recommend it. The moment it has to make money, the moment it has to, you know, provide for your family or whatever, like it, it can, it, it can die much faster because you, you, and it, and it can create a, a sort of negative pressure on it. But um, that sort of just long period of just gestation and just going, it just, that was, that really helped us to, to improve it and to tweak it and to figure out what was going to work and what people liked and didn't like. And then after two years, we kind of figured that out. And, and we, and, and also uh, that story that you mentioned, we would always, the events were free and we had somebody that attended that, you know, came in one time and just walked the, we had food at the beginning of the events and they walked in and stacked a plate full of pizza and then they just walked out and didn't attend the event. And so, you know, from there we're like, wow, we, you know, we think that our events are better than just really cheap startup food. So, you know, let's try to create barriers to entry for people to get really good people attending. And then let's also make sure that we've got the right people in the room um, who are really there to help each other and the sort of values that we aspire to. And, and so we sort of started formalizing some things then that, that I think made, made it better uh, for the chapters across the world. Yeah. Did it then, just maybe to follow up on that, did it then actually also evolve as it has started? So focusing rather more on the people attending the event, because at some point it also changed then, like now it's also about getting some external speaker and the whole concept of a fireside chat evolved. Yeah, we started originally just the format, uh, which is, you know, is, is, as you say, is now sort of more like a, an interview of, of, a, of, an, of somebody that it could be any sort of leader. Um, in the beginning, it was not that. It was just startups like I presented and I, something I had worked on at the first event and my friend presented something he had worked on at the second event. And, um, but uh, so that, that kind of evolved over time. I think that the, pretty quickly, within about six or seven months, we realized that if we had speakers, people were more likely to show up. So that's pretty obvious now why, uh, but wasn't so obvious to us at the time. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, what we've always wanted to do with StarCrime is just create an environment where people can feel welcome. People can feel like they're part of something that they can relate to. And, um, and that is taken a lot of, that still is an ongoing thing. I mean, we're always trying to find new ways. I mean, now it's all virtual. So we're trying to find ways to do that virtually. It's much harder than in person. But even in person, like we never had, in the beginning, we had an app where you could use to like check in and do all this stuff. This very early on, like 2011. And then we just got rid of it because we wanted people to be fully immersed in the experience and to put their phones away mm -hmm. while they were on, on, at the event. And so, you know, we, we just sort of learned those things piece by piece. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you already mentioned that when, when you started um, Startup Grind, um, you know, it was not the initial idea that it will be so huge, right? It will be a global um, event um, community. So um, looking back, you know, like in the year 2010, like when you started um, Startup Wine, what was then like your main goal? You also said you had some, you know, like you observed some problems, like what did you want to achieve with it um, at first at first hand? I mean, I just needed to learn. I needed to grow. I needed, I was making mistakes as somebody starting a, a company and I was in desperate need of education. And, uh, and it, you know, I always say that like nobody, the, the greatest success that's come from startup grind is startup grind. because we would listen to these talks and then, uh, you know, we would go out the next day and the next week and the next month and apply what we had learned that month. And, our business would get better. Uh, and, you know, I'm a direct, any success that I have is a direct product of, of startup grind and the things that I've learned from startup grind, because I just, you know, when you're in school, in university, they don't teach you any of these things and you can learn them. I think there's a, a lot more accessibility to information now than there was then on how to start a company, but still like learning, like, 
learning in real time or hearing it in real time, I think is significantly more impactful than, you know, than even reading about it or, you know, especially for, for entrepreneurs who I think are a lot of times they're sort of visceral learners, um, the experiential learners, they need to see it and feel it for themselves. And so Startup Grind provided a good avenue for learning in that way, which at least for me, helped me significantly. And to go from basically having a you know company that didn't work to uh, you know several iterations later to have you know having several things that work. Yeah, I think this is um, like also what Mareike and I are always saying. You know, like the good thing is, um, I mean, like meanwhile, like Startup Grind is an international brand, so it's also for us like such all the time like such a like really honor or like a big opportunity to talk like to people who would normally never answer to Mareike or Verena, right? So they just answer because it's at startupgrind.com. Um, so, um, but this would be like interesting um, also like uh, to hear, like how did you start um, like with your first speaker? Like who was it? And um, how did you reach that leverage to like, um, like invite more and more successful people? It was really natural. The first speaker was just a friend that I had met that was a venture capitalist here in Silicon Valley. His name's Spencer Tall. Um, you know, been an investor for a long time. Uh, really great person. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people showed up. Uh, and then from there, we invited, you know, one of my uh, friends, my co-founder, uh, he invited somebody that he knew had sold his company to Oracle, not for a lot of money, but it's still been acquired by Oracle. And that was interesting to people. So they came and, and then I invited other friends and then eventually from there started just cold emailing people. And <clears throat> every month I tried to say to myself, I want to get a speaker that's a little bit better than last month. And I just slowly try to work, work up the chain. And, uh, to my surprise, uh, if you ask nicely, uh, even very important and successful people will agree to do things uh, if you are, are asking in a high quality way that they seem like is going to be good for them. So, you know, once you start to get a couple of good names, everybody wants to be like those people. So then you sort of can leapfrog using those names to the next people. But in the beginning, it was just begging, you know, friends and then sending some cold emails and having some success, uh, you know, getting people to say yes. Oh, no. Actually, the, the thing is like, we took over like the Berlin chapter in 20, when was it like 2018? And it has been active already earlier. But, but like, when was like the turning point when you realized, okay, it's not only like our small community in San Francisco, and then now it was in Chicago, uh, in New York, London at some point, like, like, how did that evolve? Like, how did it like, grew internationally yeah uh about a year and a half to two years in i started i had someone come to me at the end of an event said hey i'm from los angeles i'm going home tomorrow i really want to do this in la we need this and and so we tried it out and it worked and then we started it in new york and then we at the events and in the emails, we started saying, hey, if you're from a different city and you want to host, a, you know, create a chapter, let us know. And then it just kind of grew very organically, you know, it's like from one to two to five to 10. And, <clears throat> and then when we and then we kind of got to 20 cities, then when we got to 20 cities, we did a little bit of a of an announcement on it. And um, we had a TechCrunch article that wrote about us being in 20 cities. And then from there, you know, we, we, after that article went out, we had about 60 or 70 people apply and it kind of just snowballed from there. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, within a year of then we were in 50 cities and within a, a year of that we were in, you know, 125 cities. So we, you know, we just kind of were, were really, really focused on, and I was working here in the garage for two plus years. Uh, and basically the full focus for me was I would spend all day trying to talk to people that I thought could be good chapter leaders and trying to convince them and support them in doing that. And for years, that's all that I really did. And, um, and you know, with that kind of focus and the team's focus around that, 
uh, we were able to grow and scale it and, um, you know, find other great people to come on board. Yeah. As you said, Derek, I think also convincing, um, like so many um, people internationally has always also something to do with the values behind, right? So people really, um, you know, like need to believe um, in, in what startup, why the vision and, and everything um, behind. So um, like talking about values, like making friends, helping others, like how did you actually come up um, like with these values? Like when you start Salakwan, was this something you would, like when you look back, was this something which was like early on, like kind of in the culture and, um, or was this something that evolved together as a community over time? Yeah, so uh, I think we had the values uh, in, and you know, those values, I would say, in some ways are sort of what Silicon Valley is all about, uh, which is probably counterintuitive to somebody that's not spent a lot of time here. It's like, oh, well, you know, it seems like a cutthroat place or whatever. But one of the really amazing things about Silicon Valley that I'm not from here, but I've lived here now for about 15 years, is that uh, people are so willing to open up to help. And they sh in some like it doesn't make sense for them to do it. It's not there's no advantage for them. They just do it. Um, and I know, you know, I don't know Berlin as well as other places. There are many places around the world that's not the case. Um, and so, you know, we kind of just tried to embody those types of values. And one time, a a, a very well known investor was speaking at our event. And after the event, he invited me to his office and uh, I went up there and he said, do you know what's unique about Startup Grind? It's the values. And I said, well, what are, what are you talking about? And he said, well, you know, it's clear that you're a give first, you know, kind of kinds of people. And, you know, it's, it's about helping and it's about making friends. And, and I was like, well, yeah, of course, that's what it's about. Like, isn't that what every, every you know, event and group is about. And he, he said, no, absolutely it's not. And so I, from that conversation, I came home back here to, to the garage is sitting right over here. And in about 10 minutes, I just wrote them down. And by the afternoon, we had put them on our front of our website and, um, and that, and they've never really changed uh, since then. And that became one of the most important things we did was to just articulate that very clearly for people. And it became a magnet for the types of people we wanted to be around and we were looking for. And so then when people saw that on the website and they went to startupgrind.com, um, they, uh, they would immediately say, hey, you know, I relate to that. Um, you know, that's, that's, who, that's who I am, that's who I wanna be. And if you go to the website today, I was just, I'm just checking it to make sure, but it's still right there on the front of the website. It's very clear what we're about and we articulate that pretty clearly. And I think people have, people have really resonated with that um, and the sort of simplicity of that message, but also, you know, how much impact that it, it can have. I can also uh, like one of my like my personal story also to the values and how I heard about startup grind and kind of starting the you know, or taking over the Berlin chapter was since my background is in finance and like went through the whole corporate track and when you hear about values it's just like some some BS thing that you cannot really relate to and it's like always yeah we put ourselves into each other's shoes I have never seen anybody really living up to those values. And then when I attended an event in, in London and they're like even ambassadors approaching you, like, what are you working on? How can I help you introducing you? I was like, wow, I think I need to change this, like my mindset because I was so biased by like people not really being friendly and opening and helping me. Um, so then like, I think like the value thing is like something really, it's, you have to experience and also determine not only your personal values, but also then when you build a company, like whoever you want to work and onboard as a team. Um, and also same for the, goes for the community. And now like speaking of a community or like being a community leader or builder, how would you- Can I, can I add on that really yeah. quick before we move on? And that's mm -hmm. just to say, 
I felt the same way. And if I was, if I'm before, like, it just feels like this stupid thing, like that everybody just, you know, you just do because you have to do it, but it doesn't mean anything. And what I think I found now is that having done it for, you know, having sort of been really aware of the importance of values for, uh, you know, probably about eight years or so, um, it's hugely important and it, you know, generally speaking, uh, the, the values are reflection of the early team, the team members, the sort of who they are, who they, who they aspire to be, um, who they want to be, you know, who the people they're trying to grow into and, and become, um, the skills that they're trying to acquire. So I think if, if you don't get anything out of this talk uh, or this, this conversation tonight, just take this, which is you should, if you haven't already, you know, spend 20 minutes after this is done or put us on mute. You can do it right now. Uh, and just try to write out what do I stand for? Uh, and what does my company stand for? What, what are we authentically about? Like who deep, like who are we deeply inside? Like what kinds of, people professionals are we do we want to be what's important to us and and then just write those things out and then you know try to just get some version of that on your website in the next couple of days um it doesn't need to be perfect with our my other company bevy we've we've changed the values three times and it's not because we've changed it's just we've articulated them better over time mm -hmm. um and we've refined them. Startup grind was different, and that's—I don't think that's normal. Um, but you know, but getting your values on the website, it can be the reason why someone joins the company as a team member or not. Um, so, you know, make sure and just get something up now, and then you know, keep refining it over time. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, it's a good point. Absolutely, it's super important as well. But also, since you mentioned now, Bevy, maybe you can also say a few words on on what the bevy uh, organizer app is so to keep everyone in the loop as well yeah uh about five years ago we started working on a tool for our organizers at startup grind and for our hq organization to be able to scale our community i looked at all the products that were in the market i couldn't find anything really close to what we needed so we decided we were going to do start grind for a long time. So we just said, let's just build our own tool. We'll have exactly what we need. And so we started building that myself, my co-founder, Joel, we hired another uh, engineer who became our other co-founder, Alex. And then we hired another engineer who the four of us worked on it together. Uh, and we worked on it for a year and then we launched it and startup grinds growth started to take off again. And then we went from, you know, 100 something cities to 600 cities with that tool without really having to hire a lot more people to run it. Um, so it became much more scalable with, with a good tool. And then from there, other people started to say, hey, we've heard you have a really cool tool. Your system's really neat. Like, can we, can we use that? And so uh, I started to sell it to other organizations. And... Uh, and pretty soon we started to get some really big organizations using it like Atlassian and Duolingo. And, uh, and from there we realized, Hey, if, if somebody like Atlassian who they make Jira and Trello and other big products, like if somebody like that's going to use Bevy uh, or use our product, uh, maybe we should actually, you know, create a company out of this and maybe there are other people that have it. So that's what we did. So we formed that in the summer of 2017, three years ago. Uh, Bevy now, uh, and Bevy's mission is to power communities for every company in the world. We work with companies like Salesforce, Slack, uh, eBay, Dell, uh, Google, and, and many others to help them run their communities. Um, and um, we've, we've raised about $21 million uh, to to fund that, uh, the team's about 50 people at the moment, but it's really taking what we learned from Startup Grind and applying it to, to every other organization in the world to help them have, you know, to help them be able to build a similar kind of program.
Yeah, and Derek, I think this is also um, quite fascinating also about you because, I mean, we all know that um, like these days are quite challenging, right? Um, but I think you are like an example for that, that um, in times like this, you can also use it to, you know, like move things forward, even if it is maybe a different direction. I think Bevy is just one example, I mean, um, that you raise um, like uh, such a like big amount of capital, but then also looking at startup grind. I mean, it's an event business, right? So you could say, okay, it's a startup grind. What the hell? What are we? What shall we doing now? Uh, we can't meet a person. We can't drink a beer together. We can't speak. So what? You know, like what shall we do? And I think you managed it, um, or like like the whole community managed it. You know, like to turn it into um, a virtual event um, as well. But maybe you can also like um, walk us a bit um, on on your thoughts. Like, what were your first reactions on how you could now react um, react to the whole COVID situation with startup grind, and what inspired you? Yeah, thanks for thanks for saying that. Um, uh, and I know everyone's you know everyone's dealing with so much with this, and my problems are probably much smaller than a lot of other people. So I, you know, really empathize with, with you and wherever you are in your company and your own personal situation. Um, you're, you're exactly right in that, you know, Startup Grind is an in-person events business. We've been very much, we've been sort of militant about saying only in-person, we're not doing online. And, uh, you know, in, in March, I cleaned my garage three times. Like I had nothing to do. Um, it was very <laughs> concerning time. Uh, there wasn't work. People weren't buying anything. Uh, our events completely shut off. Um, and at the same time, you know, we, we looked at what do we need to do? Huge layoffs. Do we need to shut this down or shut this down? What do we need to do? And I think what I personally said, and continue to say is to say, um, you know, you read these stories about these tools that are thriving in COVID, like they're doing better. And I'm like, I want to be one. Of, I want to be one of those. Why can't I be like them? And for some companies and products, it's just not possible. But if you're small, if, if you're not too big, you actually have a, which is probably the case for most people listening, you actually have a huge opportunity to make a shift in what is all of a sudden all these new opportunities, like all these new chances to, to build something and, and to, to help people. Clearly, uh, COVID is not going away anytime soon. So, you know, at first it's kind of like, hey, let's just wait. And then by the time I got to about April, it was like, like, oh no, like this isn't going away. So, you know, we just tried to reposition Startup Grind and Bevy into something that I would deem essential software. Uh, how, how do you get your tool to be something that is one of the top two or three tools or services that your clients are using, your customers are using, that they will not cancel? Um, so what happened with with Startup Grind is we went from one virtual event in February hosted in Beijing, China to uh, 250 virtual events in, a in, uh, in April. And, you know, we had to sort of, you know, that's in some ways heresy for us. You know, it's like the worst thing that, you know, you could have never forced me to do that or told me that was going to happen in January or in December. I would have said, you're crazy. Because we just didn't, that wasn't who we are. But we, we realized that actually who we are is about, we're about building community um, under these values. And so like, whether that's in person, virtual or something else we haven't come up with, it's all the same. We're just, we're here to help people. And so, you know, we, we sort of jumped in wholeheartedly into that. And that's been very successful for Startup Grind. I, you know, I knock on wood, but I, I think, I think not only will Startup Grind, you know, survive, I think, I think it can thrive. Um, and that's, that's really what I want to do during this time period. I, I want to thrive. And um, I'm, I'm jealous of people that are thriving. Uh, so 
Bevy, same thing. We're doing a lot of in-person. Our customers started using it for virtual. Salesforce hosted 350 virtual events with us in April. And so we made that shift. Um, and I, I would encourage anybody in a similar position, one, I, I really empathize with you. I mean, as an in-person event business, I can empathize with people who are, whose business models get decimated with COVID. Um, if, I'm hopeful we've been in it for so long. I'm hopeful you've already shifted, but if you haven't, you need to do it right away. Um, and this isn't, this isn't going anywhere. So if you wanna thrive, if you wanna be essential, um, you know, make the shift immediately and you, you can't, I mean, I would do it right now tonight, like stay up all night and figure it out what you can do to shift and work all day tomorrow and work the weekend and start going on Monday. Um, because it just, you know, this is, this is the reality that we're in and try and turn it into an opportunity if you can. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, this is also the point, I mean, when, um, like obviously when, when COVID happened, um, yeah, I mean, everyone was kind of shocked, but then there's also this moment. So either, you know, like you're on the waiting on, on the holding line, so to say, or, um, kind of, also you think, okay, so how, how can you tackle the whole situation? And, um, I mean, also, um, looking at this, um, like, international community um, that, that we have and that Mareike and I are also very happy to be part of. Um, like, what would you say, like, what were your biggest learnings like from that you gathered like during the last um, like 10 years in building a strong com a community and keep going during uh, like difficult times? Um. Thank you all for all that you're doing and all that you've built there and the community that, you, that, you're, that you're pushing ahead in, in Berlin. We're so grateful for it, we're so impressed by it. We're so grateful to have, have you all in, in as part of our you know, global family. Um, and Berlin's obviously you know, sort of the tech hub of Europe now. Uh, and so it's, it's great that you know, we have such great representation there. Um, if you're gonna build a community uh, and I would say specifically a customer community, uh, which is probably what's most applicable to most people here. Um, it's, if you have people that like your product or like what you're doing, it's basically just taking the most passionate people about what you have and giving them more layers and, uh, of, of support and, um, and what is the word I'm looking for? Um, more layers of value from your brand and your product. Uh, so if, if, if I help somebody to be a leader in my community or to sort of take up a torch to, to support my community or help run part of my community, um, I'm doing it so that I can enhance their professional lives. I'm doing it so that I can make them more successfully, both professionally and personally. Um, and so uh, the, the reasons for doing community, uh, the business reasons for doing community are huge. Like could be customer acquisition. It can be the best way for customer acquisition. It can be the best way for retention. It can be the best way for expansion um, from a business perspective. Uh, but uh, but, you know, you need to find people that are aligned with what you're doing, that have values alignment. You need to find people that understand uh, what you can actually do to enhance their, their career and their personal life and that need those things. Um, ultimately, building a community is all about people. Building a startup is all about people, too. If you get great people, uh, they have an exponential totally unfair, unbalanced impact on a company. Great people can have like a 10X impact versus a good person. And so it's the same thing with the community. If you are relentless about finding really, really good or great people to be leaders in your community, you will be very successful. Um, if you and in the very beginning, maybe it's hard. You're kind of trying to figure it out. So you're, you know, you're sacrificing a little bit on quality. But as you grow, 
uh, you just need to keep raising that quality bar every single time. And, you know, with Startup Grind, I did the first 125 chapters that we onboarded. I probably did 250 interviews to get to that point. I looked at thousands of applications. And um, so, you know, you, you know, slowly with each one, I would try to say, everyone would try and get a little better. And I'd make a mistake and I'd learn from that and try and get a little better. So, you know, just learn and grow, but really like focus on trying to get great people and, and it'll be successful. I think like just speaking of the successes, maybe you can also shift a little on the dark side and explore some of the, like the challenges that you have faced over the last years as they have probably be uh, where a lot um, not only with Startup Run, but also Bevy. And I mean, COVID was one of like the huge challenges, but maybe just some others. Uh, feel free to share also your fundraising experience, uh, which was probably not that that easy or as it used to be. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I, you know, 10 years in, so mostly, mostly failures and a few sort of a few successes along the way. Uh, I mean, I, I raised $250,000 for a company that didn't return anything uh, that went, you know, that I hired a team, we launched a product, it failed miserably. Um, I ran a consulting business that wasn't overly successful, um, like building a product, you know, like a product consulting business, we're building products for people. Um, with Startup Grind, <clears throat> it's, it was, it's still bootstrapped. So, I mean, we've almost run out of money several times um, and like, and I don't even mean the, in the beginning, like you were almost run out of money every day. Uh, but I'm even later, like we've just had some very scary moments over the years um, and we've survived those. In fact, when we, the re, one of the big reasons we spun Bevy out was because into a new company was because we were going to run out of money. Uh, with the two companies together because we had all these engineers building this software that didn't have really anything to do with startup grind and we had to make all these investments that you have to make with enterprise software and it was it was like I compare it to like a golden anchor you know about to sink a, a, a great ship and um, and so we I had six weeks to raise capital to split the two companies in half and um, and thankfully we were able to do that um, you know, people leaving, people letting you down, hiring the wrong people. The worst mistake I made at Startup Grind was um, hiring someone who was on the first day. I realized how what a horrible decision it was to hire this person, and it ended up costing us tens of thousands of dollars, more, m much more than that, to figure out how to recover from the mistakes that, that they made and the problems that they created. Um, the, the scar tissue from hiring that person created a bunch of other problems that are totally my own making, but because I was so then so scared of hiring the wrong person, I wouldn't hire anyone. And then that created more problems. Um, I mean, you know, taking things personally, uh, you know, not being patient, not being willing to make an investment where I needed to make it. I mean, I, I, there's so many mistakes I've made. So, um, but I think a lot of it comes down to people <clears throat> working on the wrong ideas, things that didn't have the potential to be big, you know, um, you know, looking, looking at, I think I wish when I started working on ideas, I looked at it from in the best case scenario, how big could this realistically be? And if it can't be big, it's probably not worth working on because it probably will never be as big as you hope it could be. So it's going to be some fraction of that. Um, so like it needs to have a big opportunity at the beginning when it maybe will only end up being this, but if it's only this at your biggest dream and it ends up being this, like you're not going to provide for your family. So, um, but, but I also believe that the people that are successful in startups is really, a, uh, it's, as much about surviving as anything. And, um, you know, startup grind, it sounds like kind of like, oh, I got to grind. It's like, you know, some people when they hear that, it's, it's really like a negative thing. Like, oh, I have to just work all night. That's, 
that's not what startup grind means. Start, what startup grind actually means is it, it's about getting better every day. It's about um, not giving up. It's about, it's about being willing to take enough risk uh, to sort of step out into the dark, um, but also creating your own luck, like just working hard and creating your own future and being creative. And like, that's what startup grind means. That's what it's really about. And I found that most, we it's fun to read about the young, successful, you know, people. Um, and, but that's not really what, that's not what most people, successful people are like. That's not, that's not the case for most successful people. Most successful people just like worked really, really hard. They didn't give up. They were able to survive for a really long time. And eventually they got their opportunity to be successful and they took advantage of it. And that's, that's where I sort of see my own experience as well as like, I think if I, if I can survive for another five or 10 years, I will be very, very successful. And um, most people that I competed against have given up. Mm. And so we just sort of outlasting people is a, it's a skill. Yeah. Um, and if you can outlast, you'll, you'll probably win. Yeah. And Derek, um, like talking about uh, surviving, um, I actually want to quote you. To be honest, I don't know where we have this from, but um, it's good. <laughs> so I want to read it. <laughs> so you said once, like your startup will surely fail, but your life doesn't have to be. Hopefully you will spend enough time, energy on other parts of your life while you are doing your startup. So that when your startup failed, because it will fail, you have something else that have been building you that you can fail back on. And I think yeah. like when Mareike and I actually read this and discussed like before the talk about it's like, yeah, this is so true, you know, like also looking at our friendship and that kind of stuff. Um, but like, um, so from our like view, what was like, what was the thing that kept you going like in your life during like your time as founder and is still actually keeping you um, moving forward? Yeah, this is something I, I think a lot of deeply about. And, um, you know, honestly, I, I struggle with trying to understand it. I think as a, as a, it's in my nature to sort of be very impatient and to sort of just like get to the next step. Uh, and what I've, you know, I have four little kids, um, and, uh, I'm not encouraging everyone on this call to have four children. Um, but, you know, I think what uh, my wife and I learned early on is, uh, is that, you know, we wanted to, you know, we, and, and I think like I wanted to have a family and I wanted to, you know, to try to be a good, good father and good husband. And um, there's this great book by this person called Clay, Clay Christensen called How Will You Measure Your Life? Everybody should buy it. Go read it. Um, Uh, he just recently passed away earlier this year, um, but it, he talks about going to Harvard and how uh, at the 10 year and the 20 year reunions, how, uh, how people stop coming back to the reunion. And, and you, you would read about these people in the, in the, you know, on the internet or in the paper. And, and he'd say, well, why aren't they here? What, what happened? They say, oh, well, you know, their life's kind of a mess and, you know, and they're, you know, family hates them, their kids hate them, their wife, you know, hates them and this and that. And it's like, well, what happened? Why are these really, really smart people and successful, like professionally successful? Why, why have they, how have they ruined their personal life? And it basically came down to, they didn't mean to, but they made all of these decisions along the way that they made to have a great professional career, but it ended up really negatively impacting their personal life. And it turns out that from what I have read, uh, when you get old, and hopefully we all live to be old, uh, but when you're old, uh, what actually matters most to you are your relationships. And it's not actually how much money you have uh, and how much success you had, but it's the people around you and the people that you helped. And so Uh, this is something I honestly, I struggle deeply. I, I, I very, I struggle deeply with 
coming to terms with it uh, because I'm a very ambitious person. But, uh, but I've just sort of said, I'm gonna go with the data here and I'm gonna try to make time now to have the family I wanna have. I'm gonna make time now to try to be a good father. Uh, I spent, I went golfing with my two older sons yesterday uh, for three hours last night. I had lots of work to do um, in my calendar. It says I'm babysitting uh, so that nobody knows I went golfing. But, you know, like, I think we're like, I'm trying to find ways to, in the midst of running a company to m do the things that ultimately in 10 or 20 years or 30 years, like, are really going to matter. No, it's not going to matter. Like if I spend an extra three or four hours on my startup in 20 years, it won't matter. But like, if I spend that time with my kids or if I spend that time, you know, trying to be a better husband, then that's, that will, that will build something that actually will be really meaningful to me down the road. So I, I say all that to say, like, I am not perfect. <clears throat> I'm not, in fact, I talk about it in some ways to keep myself honest. So I'm not a total hypocrite. Uh, like I talking about this now, like I can't be a terrible, you know, father because I've told you I'm trying not to be. So like it keeps me grounded. Um, but, uh, it's a daily hourly thing that, that I try to do. And, and I, I think there's a lot of good data around it. And I just encourage people, um, you know, there's lots of stories you can read about people who lose their company, who get fired, whose total identity is wrapped up in their job. Um, and when that happens and life kind of, the, your professional life hits you in the face, you don't have anything else. And, it doesn't need to be that way. And so I encourage you to sort of, it sort of um, grow all aspects of your, you know, of who you are as a person uh, in, in sort of as you're doing it at the same time as you're building your career, try and do it all together. Eric, do you actually have any like specific morning ritual like meditating or journaling? Because like asking yourself these questions is so profound and, and but on the other hand it's so hard because like Verena and I we like literally grinding like all night long and to the point where you realize shit either I get sick or you pass out because you're like super exhausted and that's not not healthy at all and it's just like not made for the long term but just keeping a minute or reflecting and pausing is so difficult and it's all about like a mindset and once you, you take the time to read and educate from like smart people and then you realize, yeah, I should do it more or I should do meditate and be calm and listen to my body and stuff like that. What are your thoughts or like recommendations to maybe to all the founders out there who feel the same? <laughs> I can, I can relate to exactly that. To you working until it's well said working until you get sick or what did you say? Working until you get sick or you fall asleep. Or yeah, we pass you out, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You pass out. Working until you get sick or you pass out. I, I can very much relate to that. Um, I, uh, you know, and I, uh, there's a saying that there's a time and a season for everything. Um, there's a time and a season to work really, really hard to just get something alive that is, you know, the, the startup analogy that I most relate to is that like when you start a company, like you, it's a little bit morbid, but you, it's basically like a, you have a, a body on the operating table with no pulse and you have to bring it to life. And so there is a time where you just work as fast and hard as you can. Um, it's not sustainable long-term, but you can do it in spurts. Um, I mean, look, for me, like I, I put the, the biggest thing that I do as a ritual perspective, I put the important things in the bucket first. So like, if you look at my calendar, it would say taking kids to school first in the morning. And it says between 6.30 and 8, I am having dinner with my family and I am putting my kids in bed. People know not to book during those times because I will not come um, to the meeting. And so, you know, like I put those things in first or if, you know, if I need to go do something, I mean, again, like this thing I did yesterday, I put in the calendar, nobody should take the time. I'll move things around. But if you can get it in early and get it in first, then it's hard, it's harder for people to fill that time with other things. Um, you know, I'm a person of faith. So, I mean, my, 
I, I do pray. I, I mean, that's a form of meditation. I find that to be very helpful for me. Um, you know, but I think, you know, I never used to exercise. I never used to, um, especially with startup, like you're just working. How do you have time to exercise? Uh, you don't, <laughs> but I have found, and COVID has really hurt me, but last year I started working out after like 10 years, I'm finally like, like trying to go to gym and stuff again. And I have found that I am much more thoughtful. I am, my head is more clear. I'm, e I'm more e easier to work with. Um, you know, like the whole thing about like going to bed early, eating correctly, trying to work out, which I'm not, I'm now not doing anymore. So I'm not a good example of that, but like, I do think those things fit staying physically on top of your game is worth the investment. Um, it's hard. It's hard because you're working until you, you get sick and you can't, you know, and, and uh, you know, you're, you pass out. Uh, but I do encourage you to try to find some time, uh, even if it's 15 minutes a day, do push ups. Do you know? Uh, do some sprints. Uh, you know, like go play tennis. Like go do some. Do meetings over tennis. Do like find ways to to cross over. Work out with your co-founder so you can talk. You know, um, during during while you're running or while you're you're lifting weights or whatever you're doing. Like find ways to Cut it off. cross those things <laughs> over. Um, like I I work out with somebody I consider almost like a a business coach. And so we talk about business and we, we work out together and like it, and he's very positive. And so like those things are all, you know, helpful to me in my business. And so it doesn't just feel like I'm wasting time working out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's also about the experience when you look back and it's like positively um, memories. <laughs> okay. That's my next plan. Marina, when you come to Berlin, we, we do like a walking meeting, a walking <laughs> run. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right up, um, yeah okay i just have actually um maybe just one question from my side if you also have another one just we already talked about like a bit the the long-term vision from startup grind and many things have changed also with the membership program but maybe one other aspect what would be something that you personally want to change or even see change in the whole world of startups and entrepreneurship Well, I, well, there's probably lots of things. I'm, I, if I were to sort of narrow it down to the, the, the most, the thing I would, the change I would love to see most, I'd probably say that uh, right now I would love to see um, specifically this, this applies globally, but uh, you know, with all of the, the sort of racial injustice protests and the uh, awareness that's being raised around that uh, for, you know, you know, 1% of venture capital funding goes to women, 1% uh, of less than 1% of venture capital funding goes to uh, people of color. Um, these are things that have to change uh, for entrepreneurs. And in terms of startup and in, in tech, um, you know, about 13% of the population in the United States is uh, black. And uh, I, I mean, I would love to see us get 20% uh, benchmarks of inside of my own companies, inside of the tech industry of people in the black community to be in and part of tech because tech has the best jobs, has the best future. Um, and this is going to require a lot of uh, work for all of us to, to really make this right. And, um, and, and people all across the ecosystem, investors, startup founders, CEOs, team members who are hiring and looking for new people. Like it's, 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 it's already hard to find great people. Um, and then to specifically try to diversify your team is another layer of complexity. And, um, but, but it has, it has great impact, um, both inside your company and also on the world. So I think if there's anything that, that I would hope to see is to see a lot more, uh, entrepreneurs and 
startup leaders, uh, startup team leaders who are coming out of the black community and, and just people of color in general. I would love to see um, uh, you know, the, the percentages of people in tech uh, to be more evenly dis distributed across all races. And, um, and I, I'd love to personally be an active and meaningful part of that change. So I'm thinking deeply about, and, and not, I think we've been talking, we've been marching, uh, it's time to do. And so I personally have been trying to do uh, a lot more lately and to really do my part of that. And, and we've started uh, and I've made some small things uh, that we have done to, to try to be in line with that. But there's so much more that we can do and we're working on right now to try to roll out both across Startup Grind and inside of, of, uh, inside of Bevy. And obviously, we also do our part as, as at least as the Berlin community and also like Startup Grind in Germany as, as well. And just looking at the participants, I'm also happy to see like many chapter directors and people from like recognizing the names, which is quite nice. Um, maybe just a, two final questions, actually, leading at, or at, adding on that. How can people get involved if they say, okay, I, t I totally believe in, in the story that you just shared with us. Um, if they want to maybe open their own chapter, what would be your advice for them? What should they do? Yeah, it, go to startupgrind.com slash start and apply. Um, <laughs> the reasons for running a chapter could be to, uh, you want to grow your professional network. You want to give back to the community. Uh, you want to share your voice uh, locally. And you, most importantly, share the values that we share. Uh, and if you sort of meet that criteria uh, and you are, um, you know, do high quality work, uh, we are, we don't really care about people's backgrounds as much. I mean, certainly they have a good background that helps, but we, we have a lot of people who are very early in their career or who haven't really had a shot. Um, and, you know, we're, we're excited to take risks on, on good people with similar values and give them a shot. Um, if, if they want to put in the time and energy to do it. So startbrand.com slash start. Mm -hmm. okay. Perfect. And to be honest, I think Derek, Mareike and I, we have a couple of more questions, but we don't want, or we also want to give um, our audience the chance um, to, to raise their question. So Monica, actually I would, um, or we would hand over to you. Um, and yeah, let's see what, what the audience is interested in. <laughs> Yeah, sure. So also Derek Hype from my side. Um, now we have like a sh pretty short Q&A uh, session, I would say. There's some Great. questions already here. Um, first question is a pretty personal maybe one, but uh, really interesting also from my side. When it's all said and done, how would you like to be remembered? Uh, I, I hope that people say that I was a great entrepreneur uh, professionally, I hope that to say that I was a great dad and a good husband and, you know, somebody that held to their beliefs throughout their entire life. Mm -hmm. I hope uh, Derek answered the question for you, Johnny. <laughs> and um, yeah, maybe a little bit more to, uh, towards Bevy. Um, how was it actually to combine Startup Grind and Bevy? How like in terms of time management how was it for you actually to combine everything together it was too much or do you think it's a it's a different like a certain mindset that you need to actually do so many things at the same time yeah you it's not i mean most people would say it's not good to be part of two companies at the same time uh, i would generally say that's good advice to not um that the way that the reason it works for me is because i have a great team um, both teams, Start Brian's a great team and Bevy's a great team. The other reason it works for me is because they work together. Start Grind is Bevy's essentially one of its largest users, uh, one of its largest customers from a usage standpoint. Um, I, I love building community. It's, that's my community that I'm a part of. And so, you know, we're building communities of Bevy. So uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's great to, to continue to be involved in building a great community and helps me, you know, prioritize what I want to build with Bevy because I build the things that I, that I want and the team that Starbrain wants. Um, uh, 
you know, the, the, the only way that it works for me is that I just, I only do the things I have to do. Mm -hmm. Um, anything that I don't have to do, I delegate to someone else. And so, um, I'm pretty, pretty, uh, you know, like militant about that. Uh, just like got to stick to that all the time. And, and I don't, that kind of frustrates some people because sometimes they want me to do some things, but if I, if it doesn't need to be me, then somebody else should do it. And we've got lots of amazing people on the team to do it. Um, so yeah, I, I know that the, that person's question, they were, if they have any specific questions about Bevy, happy to answer those as well if they just want to post them in here. Yep. Maybe another cool question is, um, is there like a certain personality that inspired you actually, especially during the journey? Someone who has like shaped you on, on your way? Like someone inside of Startup Grind or just someone in general or? Or maybe both <laughs> inside of Startup Grind and maybe someone in general. Yeah, I mean, um, I, one of the most inspiring people to me is, uh, I mentioned him earlier, but is Clay Christensen. Mm -hmm. who uh, wrote about the, the, he wrote a book called Innovator's Dilemma. It's a very famous book. Um, it's about the disruption theory, about how new companies can disrupt big established companies and why they can do that. Um, he, he's also an amazing person. He spoke at Startup Grind a couple of times. He's probably the most intellectual person I've ever met. He's one of the like, He's been ranked as like the number one business thinker in the world, uh, you know, for sev several years. Uh, he's, he's, again, he's passed away, but, but while, while he was alive. Um, but he's also like the most humble, kindest. Uh, I mean, he was like just unbelievably kind. Uh, and he's also maybe the most intelligent person I've ever met. So he's definitely somebody that I admire greatly and hope to hope some of it rubbed off on on me while while I while I was able to spend time with him. Great, thank you. Maybe to stick to the uh, to the book recommendations you already mentioned with Christensen. Um, are there other books that you would like to recommend actually for someone who's interested into the whole startup ecosystem or maybe also someone who wants to be an entrepreneur? Um, in uh, I like uh, Four Steps to the Epiphany by Steve Blank is a great book of just learning mm -hmm. about what product, what it means to have product market fit and what you do before and after that. Um, you know, I think uh, Ben Horowitz's is uh, the hard thing about hard things is a, is a very real book. My favorite startup book is, um, is a book by Jessica Livingston, um, who is the co-founder of, um, of uh, or I say maybe, maybe like the most influential startup book that I've read. She's the co-founder of uh, Y Combinator, and um, and her her whole book is just interviews and and of of uh, people that build companies and the way that she talks about it, and um, it's called Founders at Work, and just the way that she goes through it, I think, is fascinating and was very very instrumental in me wanting to start a company. So those are those would be some. Thank you, I already, already wrote that down. <laughs> Sounds really interesting, thank you. But maybe to get back to Startup Grind a little bit, um, what actually do you think is necessary to like expand the community if you already start like a chapter in your local area, but maybe to expand then in different, um, in different locations all over the world, different chapters, what is actually necessary to do that? Uh, you need some time, uh, you need, uh, I mean, you, you know, you, you need to have a plan. Uh, we kind of help people walk through those plans, but you really just need to be in a position professionally that you can spend time on it, that it's good for your business um, and that, that it's available. Or, I mean, you can also just get involved with the local chapter, even if there is a chapter already. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I mean, really it's, it's just like having a, des a desire, um, going through the application process, Uh, and then, you know, getting to work on it and making things happen. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, and, and it's by that, in, it's that way by design. And so, you know, we've had thousands of people participate in organizing and running chapters. Uh, it's not rocket science. Um, it's, uh, there's a way to do it. And we sort of help 
guide you through that, the, the, those steps on how to do it and, and um, help you be successful. But I think it mostly just starts with a person just it, solving a, a need for them in what they want to be or who they want to be or, you know, what they want to help people around them with. And if they do, then, then they should apply. We have here actually from uh, another question from Thomas. Maybe you can a little bit deep dive um, because he was asking, how did you get the community growing? So, and he, um, he also said, I keep on having nice speakers, but struggle to promote the session that more people come. Yeah, good question. Uh, I mean, we've used things like Eventbrite and Meetup to kind of help bring people in, uh, partnerships with different groups. Um, I think, you know, look, if you're starting and, and you don't, if you're starting a community and you don't have a distribution channel, um, again, I, if this is specifically about, let's say it's not specifically about Startup Grind, um, hopefully you have a customer base that you can rely on or prospects or people that, you know, are interested in this kind of thing that you can point towards. If it is Startup Grind specifically, um, you know, it, first of all, being relentless about exceptional speakers, like, and this, uh, I always say to like, when people say like, I, do I, you know, do I have good enough speakers? Like, well, who are the most, five most successful entrepreneurs in your city? Who owns the football team? Who owns, you know, you know, who are people talking about in the media? Who's getting all the entrepreneur awards? Like, are you having those people speak? And if not, why not? They will bring audience with them. People get them to tweet, get those people to agree to speak, get them to tweet about it get their company to promote the video once it's done, get them to introduce you to some of their friends. Um, you know, there, there are ways to like great, great speakers will bring people with them naturally. Um, and, and then just build partnerships, find win-wins, find companies, find people that can't create this kind of content that can't get those kind of speakers to attend and let them piggyback off of your event uh, by bringing their audience to your, to your event and make them a partner of the event or something like that. Um, but, um, you know, find people that can get value out of it and show them that value and then help them bring their audience over. Another nice question, actually, uh, what is your vision for Startup Grants future? We hope to educate every entrepreneur and startup person in the world. And we help tens of millions of people every year through all of our videos, all of our blogs, um, all of our events. Uh, there are about 400 million entrepreneurs in the world, uh, small business owners, people that are trying to create a job for themselves. And so we have a really long ways to go uh, for the people and that we can help. And I think this is one thing that COVID is terrible as it's been. Um, it's an opportunity for Startup Grind to do a lot of this digitally where we were doing it all in person. It's much easier to do it digitally. And, uh, and so we're, we're finding new ways, opening new things like a membership and partner program and, you know, other things we can do to support people wherever they are and not forcing them to come to, you know, our, our event um, in person, but letting them do it digitally. And so we're excited about hopefully fulfilling more of our mission now post COVID than we were before. As we are already in the future a little bit now, um, if you could make a wish, who would, who would you like to have as a guest for one-on-one -on -one fireside chat? So like who's on your list of interesting personalities you would like to interview or have like a chat with? <laughs> uh, well, my list, not the most original list, but I mean, Richard Branson, Elon Musk, uh, Jay-Z be somebody I'd really like to interview. So, uh, yeah, Dr. Dre, uh, yeah. Those are those those are the people at the top of my list. Oprah. <laughs> Oprah. <nice. laughs> I would like to have a one-on-one -on -one with Oprah as well. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah. Okay. Um, another question. I think we are pretty close to the time. Let me check. Yeah. What would be your next company, Derek? Oh man. You I have, saw that question. I, don't think I was hoping that. I wouldn't get asked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I don't think about it. Um, people always say to me like, oh, you talk to so many founders, like, don't you have like a lot of, like so many ideas that you want to work on and said, and I just try and stay focused on what I'm doing. So I actually, I don't have any thought to what I would do next. And uh, I have so much to do right now. So 
uh, right now I'm just hoping that the things I'm working on will be successful and grow and, and that will be satisfying enough to me for the near and long term. Well, thank you, Derek, for, for these insights. I don't know if I actually answered all the questions now. Please um, feel free to interrupt Mareike and Verena if I haven't. I think, I think that's good for now. And I'm also very positively surprised and, and very grateful for Derek's time, uh, for, for your time, guys, who, whoever is now watching, like all around the world. I think like the main takeaway to that, like so many, and I think we will post a few and tag you in the, in the social media posts, <laughs> very tweetable insights. Um, but yeah, like major takeaway, also like in a, in a nice and fun way, shift your business if you haven't already, stay focused, now do some push-ups, get your, uh, your accountability <laughs> partner. Um, and yeah, if you, if you guys like what you've seen today, um, we do this on a monthly basis. So just go on startupgrind.com slash Berlin, subscribe to our newsletter. We always uh, keep you informed. And, and soon we will be back to, to inverse person events, maybe over a beer in the park where they have like literally social distance. Um, but also if like in the meantime, you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Also, if you have specifically any legal related questions, um, ping Sebastian a message or an email and there are still lots of programs uh, where like the government is supporting uh, startup founders um, so he's always really very supportive has helped us uh, like Verena and I personally so very grateful for that um, but other than that any parting words Derek from your side before we before we close it up <laughs> thanks for having me thanks for a uh, great conversation appreciate everyone and great questions and being engaged uh, if I can be useful in some way, I'm just Derek at Startup Grind. Uh, I'm not an investor, uh, so I can't be helpful in that way, which maybe what some people need. But um, but if we can be supportive with Startup Grind in some way, or I can be helpful, feel free to send me a note. Um, don't give up. Yeah. Keep after it. Thank you all. Great job on this, and thanks for having me. Thank you, guys. And I don't want actually to just. Sorry, I need a final note. <laughs> 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 I don't want to destroy your good words, but I just want to say, great event. I just got actually a message on LinkedIn. Hey, Verena, how, get I, uh, how can I get involved in, uh, in Startup Wine Berlin? It was a cool event. So, curious on that. Um, very cool. And um, see you all um, in August to our next event. And thank you again, Derek. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. All. See ya. Thank you. Take care, time. guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.